Warframe is a massive free to play game and that's no understatement. But just exactly how much do you think that you know? Well, let's go and put that to the test. In this video, I will cover 10 completely randomized systems and topics to test whether or not you knew they existed or better yet, how they even worked. So sit back, relax and be honest. Let me know if you knew all 10 of these Warframe topics. Number one, secret doors. Certain tile sets within Warframe hold secrets and rewards to those who pay attention. On the planet Jupiter, for example, you can find four symbols on a specific door in which can be opened if the right conditions are met. Searching around, you can find in here an access controller for you to then shoot and break open. And when doing so, this opens these panels that you can find here on the wall, which are always nearby the secret door that you need to go and open in order. By interacting with all four of these panels within a quick time limit, you'll be able to open the door and see what's inside. However, secret doors usually require an operator with your void amp to open them up further. And we can see this in future missions, such as within the isolation vaults inside the open world Cambion Drift. These reactors are scattered around and interactable with your operator's damage. Now, these are just a few side focus options, but they're definitely a cool addition to those who are not aware of their existence. Number two, vulnerable frames when draining. Naturally, when transferring and leaving your Warframe to play around in your Operator mode, your Warframe left behind is in a state of invulnerability, meaning that nothing is going to affect the frame state, allowing you to focus solely on your Operator gameplay. However, if your Warframe is using an ability that is active and draining per second, like Sephagoth's Gloom ability, your Warframe is not in the invulnerable state anymore. In fact, it's active to be targeted by enemies as per usual, but with a 90% damage reduction included. So this means that if you are wanting to go ahead and do something like this, you are going to need to go and focus on good positioning and awareness of incoming enemy direction. Pay attention, guys. Number three, power cell tips. During a mission, excavation, whenever you pick up a power cell on the ground, your character is locked into a stand and steal animation. This makes you quite an easy target to be here, especially against higher leveled enemies. Well, did you know that with selectable pickups, such as a power cell, for example, you can actually roll before with your Warframe or your Operator, and during the roll animation over the cell, you can use your active function button to simply pick up the cell with no stuck in place animation holding you back. Now, this is a neat tip for those who are always on the move. Following this, whenever you pick up one power cell with your Warframe, did you know that you can switch out to your Operator and collect another power cell, effectively bringing two cells to one location at the cost of one travel rather than a back and forth? Do keep in mind, however, if your operator is holding the cell and you transfer back into your Warframe, you will drop the cell that the operator was holding. So you see, it's always better to go and pick up with your Warframe first. And when you have both of the cells acquired, travel to your designation with your operator first. Deposit it in and let the excavator collect the cell. Then use your Warframe transference to teleport your Warframe right next to you with the cell still in its hand. Two birds, one stone, as they say. Number four, primed death orbs. Within the Oricon tile sets, you will find certain traps in the form of a large like ball named a death orb. When triggered or activated by a pressure plate, for example, these orbs can either shoot out lasers, dealing damage to the player, or summon like a big thumper, knocking down players who come too close towards them. Well, if you're using a Prime Warframe, that's literally any Warframe that has the word Prime after their name, coming closer and into contact with these orbs provides the player and nearby allies a one-time pulse of 250 energy. This actually makes them great for utility during your missions. Keep an eye out for these. Number five, Batch Endo. Now, to this day, I'm still surprised that there are a few people who are not aware of this. After all, with how much is provided within Warframe, you cannot know everything. However, when using the modern machine within your orbiter, did you know that instead of dismantling all of the duplicate mods that you have either one by one or by a quantity selection, you can actually use your middle click on your mouse to simply select the entire stack of mods, making it so much faster to quickly grab a cluster of them and then move on to the next, saving you quite a fair bit of time and dismantle for quick endo. And guys, it should go without saying, but I'll say this anyways. Please don't do this all of the time, especially if you're relatively newer to the game. Double check that you have at least one of these mods ranked up and maxed out before you then start dismantling without four. See, some mods are much rarer than others, so acquiring them again can be time consuming. Corrupted mods 
ones, for example, like Blind Rage, you're going to want quite a few of them at different ranking intervals too. But this is more for min max and on certain builds. My point is, just be careful before you start doing this. A bonus round. Did you know that you can head over to warframe.com forward slash promo code and get yourself a free no sympathy glyph on any platform? Now, you can also do this by redeeming it at the market console within your orbiter. Either way, get yourself the crispiest glyph to use as your display profile or decorate that trash can that you have on your ship to give it a nice proper look. Whatever your selection, just remember that the real veterans always know that you can place down two glyphs in a mission for that extra bit of cheekiness lovely jubbly number six mining tool well this one comes in quite short at number six but it's definitely one i know for a fact will catch somebody off guards in the open worlds such as plains of eidolon or valis or even cambian drift are areas where you can find minerals and ores to mine with your mining tool however some of those ores are in darn pesky places where it's hard to see them well did you know that when you are ready adsing and zooming with your mining tool you can middle click with your mouse to zoom even further and magnify it making the tops of caves much easier to see closing the gap and chasing your beam better for your ores now do go and keep in mind i don't believe this actually really increases the range of the beam it's just a good way to go and help you visually in sticky situations number seven vault speed i'm sure many of you guys have entered missions and found yourself paired in a squad with the warframe vault but they are modded to the absolute push with the strength in their builds so whenever they use their second ability speed on smaller tile sets you can find yourself going way too quick and loss of control is inevitable well did you know that if you don't want this buff placed upon you, you can actually backflip in game to remove the buff off your character and continue without the added speed, giving you full control and back to the pacing that you wish for. Now, this is one of the only and very few Warframe abilities that another player can remove the buff off themselves by utilizing the parkour command. If you guys can think of any others, I welcome the comment section floor for you guys to share other tips about other frames that can either be removed or utilized to how you want to play play not how they want you to play number eight stealth affinity we all know that killing enemies and doing specific activities reward you with experience to help you level up your warframes and weapons but did you know that killing unalerted enemies rewards you with a bonus named stealth affinity every kill up to five kills for a 500 percent increase to affinity on unalerted kills see this means that you can rank warframes or weapons so much faster whilst being rewarded for your awareness and control within the mission now thankfully i already have a video which covers this topic in more depth and explains how you can benefit more from this type of niche mechanic within the game so feel free to go check that out Number nine, mobility. Parkour in Warframe is one of its biggest strengths. Even if you are new to the game and unsure what exactly is happening, the odds are you're having fun trying to learn the best way to jump around. Well, here's two tips for you to learn. Number one, you can reset your bullet jump by pushing off a surface. Now this can come in handy when going up vertical tile sets or even if the team ahead of you took an elevator and left you behind them chasing. Bullet jump into the wall, then jump connecting against it. Now you're gonna be free to bullet jump again. This is extremely helpful in situations where even you're falling off the map and you're looking to stay alive. As long as you keep doing this exact motion, you can do this infinitely. And number two, animation canceling is always helpful. And in a game that promotes fluidity like Warframe, whenever you ground slam, it's a quick and effective way to gap close and fall off downwards vertical areas. However, as you land, you'll be locked into that slam animation. Well, if you time this correctly, and as you're about to go ahead and land and are aiming towards the slamming animation, you can input your roll control to get out of this animation very, very quickly, allowing for better flow with less interruptions. Now, I'm definitely guilty of doing this a lot, and once you learn it, it's very hard to go back not using mechanics like these. And of course, guys, there are other movement controls, such as learning how to backflip forwards, but these are optional and aren't really useful besides from the fun factor, but hey, parkour is always fun to mess about with and learn. Number 10, lock pins. Warframe is always about direction, as we know by following whatever objective waypoint is in front of us. However, in the open worlds where you roam free, did you know that you could place a permanent waypoint in which never resets even if you leave the area and mission? 
always available and ready for whenever you rejoin. Lock pins are found within the Tenno Lab inside your dojos. Grab yourself a blueprint and begin to craft a few of these at your foundry. Then, when you have enough, equip them within your gear wheel and enter an open world area such as the Plains of Eidolon. Now, by placing one of these down, you can go and mark specific locations and edit the marker for an icon and text to help you remember what exactly was in this area of interest for yourself. You can place down up to a maximum of 15 lock pins per open world, and if you no longer wish to use them anymore, you can simply remove them and get rid of them, freeing up space and not cluttering your future experiences. Righty -o then, guys, there is 10 random things I decided to pick out of Warframe just to see how much you guys really know about the game. And I have to ask, did you know and understand all 10 of these? If you did, let me know. And if you enjoyed a video like this, then let it be heard by supporting with a like, share, and even subscribe if you're new. If you would like me to go and find 10 more niche interests in Warframe, let me know, and I'd be happy to go and do a follow-up video. But until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll be seeing you guys again in the next video.